We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Good evening, welcome to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Uh, big welcome to Malcolm and to Gibbo. How are you, lads? All right, Steve, thanks. How are you, John? Absolutely good. Despite oh, the result, uh, the last result, absolutely okay by now. Yep, and that's where we're starting tonight. Uh, as always, get your questions in. I can see a few questions already filtering in. You've got an hour uh, of this wonderful show uh, to uh, get a few questions into the two legends. And uh, we will start with Malcolm. And a look back to uh, a disappointing uh, trip to Stamford Bridge. Um, five goals uh, we had. It wasn't a thriller. Uh, Newcastle losing by three goals to two. Disappointing, I think, because I think we all felt that this was a rare trip to Stamford Bridge at Newcastle. Felt they could have got something, Malcolm. Yeah, 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 um, absolutely. And I think we all had every right to believe that we would come back with something. Um, what I what I really don't understand is how last season we were so successful uh, reaching the Champions League, etc. And the way in which we played was that the back four pushed right up. It was a real squeeze job on the opposition. It got opposing forwards a long, long way away from goal. So why is it that this season and and, and against Chelsea it was um, it was more blatant than 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 it has been of late? Why are we actually just dropping onto the toes of the goalkeeper? Either either there is a complete lack of confidence in themselves, in their in the defence, in the goalkeeper. When a side drops off, it means that there are things wrong, and particularly a lack of confidence. Lack of confidence in who though, um, and. And and I just I, I just thought we were begging Chelsea to go and score against us, um, and yet we've gone there. We've scored two goals two goals ourselves, and you think, ah, come on, yeah, that should be enough for Chelsea to to, to come away with with a, a, at least a draw, if not a win. But I, I thought we were we were shocking at the back, and we and we weren't. I, um, and I, I didn't feel that the, that the midfield had too good a game. Al- although the lad who's who's come back from um, from injury, bless him, I thought he was terrific on the night. But but he wasn't well supported at all. Um, uh, and, and I just came away scratching my head over the performance thinking how how do you make sense of all of that and i and i'm here we are some days later and i still can't make full sense of it what about you john can you make sense of it well, i just thought my i mean i was so disappointed because i just thought we're well, back to bad habits bad yeah. habits of this season not, not last season yeah. when we were when we were excellent, we're back to bad habits. And what I didn't understand with Eddie 
is that when we played Wolves, we employed a low press, brought them onto us and countered, which was totally different to the way we normally play and were played mm -hmm. when we were very successful last season, but countered because with the great speed we had up front with Gordon Almiron and, um, and uh, Isaac. So that worked 3-0. We go down there in for an away game, that style suits an away game better than a home game. For an away game, all of yeah. a sudden, we didn't was open as a barn door yes. uh, swinging on its hinges. We abandoned all that. The they, they, um, clean sheet that was so welcomed against Wolves lasted five minutes at Stamford Bridge. <coughs> we were one down in five minutes and then we let in three. And, you know, with hindsight, I didn't say it at the time and neither did any of the press lads or whatever. But when you look at the, the, the clean sheet against Wolves was a huge rarity. It was something that happened all last season, but it's a huge rarity this season. And you just think with hindsight, did we get a clean sheet against Wolves? Because both their top scorers didn't even start. They were out injured. And Neto, their best forward, the most creative forward was strangely off it and was substituted injured at half time. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. led itself to a clean sheet. We didn't look like a clean sheet team when we played down at Stamford Bridge. And you know, that much vaunted back four of last season, which was Trippier, Shaw, Botman, and Byrne, Trippier didn't play, but the, all of them have been poor this season as a unit. Yeah. As a unit, they've been poor. Shaw's had a good season individually with his creativity, his passing from his own penalty area. Botman's shot. Botman is absolutely shot. He's come back from yeah. his injury, obviously, far too quickly. He should have perhaps had a knee operation. It is bothering him, and his confidence is gone completely. He's a yeah. shadow of the bloke we know. Burn. And, and, then, and thus, John, it's making other players so unsure. Yeah, but burn, burn, for goodness sake. I mean, are we ever going to learn? They're queuing up on that side. I thought they were selling hot pies. There was a queue twice around the stadium to play on the right hand, uh, to play on the, Chelsea's right hand side. I mean, every game we play in the, in the outside right looks sensational. I mean, mm. it's happened against Luton. It's happened against Bournemouth. Yeah. Cole, Cole, Cole Palmer got himself in the England team playing against Burton down at Stamford Bridge. He massacred him. He was the one class act on the pitch, Palmer. And, and he absolutely destroyed Burton, who in fairness to him, he needs protection. I mean, he's so limited when out wide, he needs protection. And that's provided by the fellow in front of him. Unfortunately, Gordon, who is willing to track back as well as go forward normally, was strangely off with an injury and was... I, I mean, I think he must have been carrying that almost in the back. He never tracked back once. He let he let Palmer go the whole game at Burn, And, of course, he killed him. He absolutely killed him. I mean, I look at that team, and if Steve says to me later on, what team would you pick to go to Manchester United... I know all the players that deserve dropping, but I don't know who deserves playing. The one man whose reputation, two, in fairness for me, whose reputation uh, was okay down there, Lefamento for me was star man. He, mm -hmm. he went into a back four. The other three were awful. I thought I thought Tino was, did well. And, and so I give him a plus. And I thought Murphy did well when he come on for goal. Yes, he did. And he got a good goal and he put some crosses in. I thought he did well. But you look at the rest of it. I mean, the midfield. I mean, Longstaff shot. Botman shot. Burns mm. shot. I mean, mm. the shot. The honestly, they are dying to get mm. out of the side. I don't mean mentally. I mean, they need it to get out of the side and get a rest. It's whether we've got people to bring in. And it's whether we'll do something i would like i would like eddie to do something to make pep think and to make our players think go to five at the back change some personnel i mean if we're sitting here and we're going to ladbrook steve with with a hundred quid to put on impacts 
you would bet that he'll play the same back four as Chelsea, because Lefamento has to, but he'll play Shaw, he'll play um, Shaw, Botman and Byrne, he'll play the same three midfield. I mean, please change it. I mean, yeah. you know, you've got Lachelle. Are, we, are, we, not, John, are Sorry? we not on this? Starting, Sorry? Are we not starting to see um, a weakness in the manager? Um, well, in, he, in as he much could. that he, he he won't change the team, he or the ta or the tactics, and he doesn't change the tactics. Yeah, exactly. Um, then, and they've got Plan A and no Plan B. Oh, I think that part is very very right. I don't want There's to no have change any, during I mean, the game. Where said he come? Since Eddie come, the first season he did magnificent to keep us up. The second season we got top four. But we can't just go on being grateful. And it's not meaning you're anti Newcastle to get worried about something. It actually means you're poor Newcastle. And it doesn't mean you're anti Eddie Howe because you're not having a go. You're saying, please, Eddie, sometimes even the greatest make mistakes. I mean, I, I yeah. remember going to Bob Paisley and spending five days with him in Liverpool when they were winning the the European Cup every year and saying, what's your secret? And he says, I'll tell you the secret, Gibbo. There isn't a secret. But what good managers do, they don't try to um, justify their mistakes. They get rid. They change things. And he said, yes. the good manager is not the manager that makes no mistakes. It's a manager that makes the least mistakes. And, sure. and I think that's a very fair situation. And I'm just looking. I'm going down there. And I need a lift to Man City, and I want to make Pep think about things, and I want to make the, the Manchester City players think about things. Now, if we go 4 3 3 with the same back four and the same middle three, forget the front, because at least we're scoring some goals. If we play the same back four and keeper, and we'll play the same middle three, and we'll play 4 3 3. He hasn't got a thing to think about. Pep knows what's going to happen now, and so that every one of the Manchester City players. Is it worth playing Lascelles? Is it worth going five at the back? Is it worth playing Byrne as a left-sided centre-half? Is it worth bringing Miley in or gambling that Anderson's fit enough to start? It's yeah. just doing something different because we're predictable. We're not only predictable to the opposition, we're predictable to ourselves, and we're not making players think. If I'm Botman or I'm Longstaff, I'm wondering why I'm playing every week with me form, but I know I'm going to be playing every week because I'm never dropped. Mm. Lots mm. of interesting comments coming in, lots of questions coming in. Um, there was one about Eddie Howe, which I will take because lots of people have been uh, discussing it um, in the chat this week. Do Super Macro Gibbo think we will part ways with Howe at the end of the season? I hope not, but the yeah. rumours are in full circulation. And uh, Trolls is one who wants to see the back of Howe at the end of the season. So we're hearing lots of people saying that. But I mean, for me... You know, I think Eddie Howe, first of all, has got credit in the bank for, for what he's done in the first 18 months of his managerial career at Newcastle. And I also think that no matter which manager came in, if he was to, to leave, whether it be under his own steam or whether he'd be ceremoniously dumped, I, I think that most people would struggle because Newcastle will still be in the same position with regards to FFP. So if you give a Conte the job, at a football club, Newcastle or otherwise, he wants 200 million to spend in every window. He's not going to get that at Newcastle. Um, so, Eddie Howe, what's your thoughts, Malcolm? I think he's got enough credit in the bank to see this, to see the season out and start next season. Well, yes, I would agree on, on that comment that he has, that, that yes, he, he's certainly got credibility here at Newcastle. And I, plus the fact that he is, he can be considered a, a young manager um, with lots in front of him. And I keep hearing about Mourinho, for heaven's sake, Mourinho's old news. And, I, 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 and he's not going to he's not going to come to somewhere like Newcastle when when we are so tied by, by FFP and we are seriously tied because we've got to come up with the money. For Lewis, for heaven's sake, and um, 
uh, 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 for, for Hall, I mean, and um, uh, uh, and pay Chelsea off, and for and and that depletes um, what what we would dearly like to do, and 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 that is bring a few more players in. Can't do it. Can't do it. So. Uh, we, I, I just, I, I find this FFP so restrictive on on people who um, that it's not saving, it's not helping. It, it, it's, I mean, I take all, I take all. I, I don't think for one moment that I, I was going to go in the summer. Um, no. I just don't think that'll happen, and I don't think the certainly the english contingent of the board i.e amanda stavely uh, jamie rubin and amanda's husband they, they that are based over here they uh, in running the club i mean of course amanda's a board etc but they will not get rid they will not push the saudis to get rid of um how uh, um, we don't know how trigger happy Saudis are because they never talk um, to anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not meaning they should; they just don't. They've got the figureheads yeah, in the mind they, there. It, it it totally they can't. They won't. They don't do it. So we mm -hmm. don't know for certain what to think. But I would be staggered. I don't think there's a, there's any chance of that happening. But what I've got to say is. And by the way, Mourinho's got no chance. I mean, he is yesterday's man, big time. By the way, he would walk here, but he won't get the chance to walk here. Well, he can keep walking and he'll end up with Belt Rangers. But <laughs> he's got no chance. Uh, so we can forget about him straight away. But while it's true what Mal says and what Steve's saying, there's restrictions and new managers and there's financial fair play and all that, but let's get it right within the restrictions of what newcastle's got we should be able to make a decent fist of it uh, i'm not talking about you know being in the top four every year but if we get with tactics right if we get organization right if we buy within the restrictions the right players and, and it works for us we can make a half decent fist of it and we made a magnificent fist of it last season. We made a half decent fist of it. The first half of this season, when we were beating Paris Saint Germain and, and a couple of others, we were making a decent fist of it. 2024, we've made no fist of it at all. We mm -hmm. can do better than this. And this is where he's got to earn his coin. He's going to stay. He has money in the bank, as Steve says, etc., etc. But we can't hide behind that forever. It is now up to him to organise tactics, to organise team selection, to in uh, to put more confidence in players, to shake up players at the same time by not picking them automatically when they're dreadful week after week after week after week, like Botman and, and, and Longstaff. And by the way, I'm not having a go at those two lads because they, for me, come back far too quickly from injury. And that's one of their problems. They were never fit. I, I'm not certain that Botman doesn't need an operation on his knee. And Longstaff was rushed back because we didn't have numbers. And there have been a pale imitation of what they really are because they've come back, in my opinion, very, very quickly because they had to because we had nobody around. But we can make, we cannot hide behind financial fair play and injuries for the rest of time. And that's what we're doing at the moment. It is correct. That is a good reason for not being in the top four, but it's not a good reason yes. for being tenth. No, no, I absolutely, John. Um, I, I, I certainly agree. Um, albeit, it, it, when, when you look at the kind of injuries that we've had, I, one of the questions that has to be asked is, why are we getting so many long-term injuries? There's hardly there's hardly a, a a player missing for just a couple of games, and then coming coming back having having had his treatment and what have you, uh, um, and away he goes. No, they're out for two months, three months, four months, five months for heaven's sake. And of and course, I, Harvey Barnes haven't come back. Is out again now. And he's out again. I know it. It's it's absolutely crazy and. Uh, <coughs> And of course, the, um, of, of course, it's going to affect everything um, when when um, when when you're missing so many players. 
and uh, and I, but I, I I really don't understand why that all such long term injuries and and it begs the question: Is there something wrong um, in training? Is there something um, that they're, that they're not organising in terms of, of getting players stretched out? Although players should always stretch themselves out. They, they shouldn't need to be told what to do and how to do it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, a lot of questions to be asked, I think. Um, there, there, there was a question that came up about the, the physiotherapy um, and, and uh, uh, was um, uh, uh, and, and was there a, a head physio um, since Derek Wright retired? Um, but I, I think there is, isn't there? As far as I'm aware, yeah. And, and they and they've got a number of physios. Good heavens above! Most clubs used to run on, on with just one or, or or maybe two physios. But these yeah, days, those days have well changed. There's there's oh, as much medical, there's as yeah. much medical the stuff and data stuff. There's um, more medical stuff and data stuff than our players these days. Yes, it seems at yeah, times. absolutely, yeah. there is, John. You know, and I always remember a few years ago. When um, when uh, um, uh, uh, Mark Hughes was the manager of Man City, and the Man City um, uh, two buses rolled up, and, yeah. and and one was for the team and kit, and the other was a fifty-two seater for all of the support staff, and it, I'd never seen anything like it ever before. You know, we all we used to have loads of room still with everybody on the one bus yeah there, there, there was times i think you could have got on a motorbike yeah and put somebody in the sidecar and the whole that would have been the whole team pretty much so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interesting stuff uh we will wait and see what happens um knowing newcastle um they will uh, pull off a couple more surprise results before the end of the season and things may change again but uh lots of comments coming in george says at worst we should be seventh because we are richer than none uh big six clubs we should demand success and being a soft touch too many poor teams i mean lots of opinions coming in you know everyone's got uh, everyone's got one yeah, Newcastle fans true. will be biting their nails watching gordon play for england hopefully no aggravation of his injury yeah congratulations yeah, yeah. Um, congratulations on him um being selected i, I hope mean, he's going to be fit for it well i well the answer to that, Malcolm, is yes, because I know that Southgate has talked anyhow about his fitness before he announced his squad. Yeah. So he would not be yeah, able to put him in the squad procedure. if Eddie had said, to be truthful, he's not going to be any good to you. Whether he'll get on the... I mean, there's a big difference between being a 25-man squad and playing. Whether he'll get on the pitch at some time as a sub in these games, I would sincerely hope so, because the lad thoroughly deserves it. He mm -hmm. is absolutely dedicated to Newcastle United. He's absolutely dedicated to England after his performances when we won the under-21s, Euros. I mean, it was a wonderful interview he did with my mate Craig Hope recently where he, he actually said that he's refused to book a holiday. This was before he was picked today by England. He refused to book a holiday with his missus to go away in the summer because he's still hoping he gets to Euro, the Euros this mm -hmm. summer. So he hasn't booked his summer holiday. So good luck to him. By far, for me, with the possible exception of Shaw, but even including him, at this stage of the season, I make Anthony Gordon our man, of, our player of the season. And he's I think it's, Yeah, I think it's a wonderful thing that he got in today because he deserves that in, encouragement. Yes. He finished off his under-21 career in the best way possible. He played a false nine during the summer. He was brilliant. We won a tournament. He kept in fitness. He come back to us. He was a shadow last season because he wasn't up to, to what was needed tempo-wise at Newcastle. He's been an absolute revelation this season. So good on him. Thoroughly deserved. I'm delighted for him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Blue Ribbon Boy says there's two games, so it'll be close to different 11s from Gareth Gordon should play at some point. Yeah, I would imagine he will. Yeah, uh, with our injuries, I'd like Gordon to stay in Newcastle. It's not going to happen, Trolls. Uh, he's already done his interview at uh, Newcastle today and said he's thoroughly looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, we will wait and see. Uh, we are halfway through the show. Time for the ads.
A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com, email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk, email info at mrvickies.co.uk, or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morpeth and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from Ticketmaster. .co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website Tyne Theatre and Opera House.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the Northeast Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9 a.m. on DAB. Smart speakers and the two new care.com. And tickets on sale. Don't forget for the end of season party, which is in uh, we're raising money for Dementia Matters. Uh, tenor a ticket, Superman and Gibbo uh, will be on the Long Sands acoustic set as well. Tickets from nufcmatters.com and tickets from newcastlelegends.com. Okay, well, let's get into the questions before we look ahead to uh, the game at the weekend. And uh, let's randomly pick one. Uh, Alan, yes, uh, question for Malcolm What was the goal? That was classed as his best ever, which there is no TV coverage. Was it against Leicester City, Mal? Oh, I know the one. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, it was uh, against Leicester City. What 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 people might not be aware of is that um, there was this strange ruling on television that uh, they had to treat all clubs totally equally. So time tees. Um, if what they had to do was literally treat um, Darlington, Hartlepool, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, and Newcastle, and York all equally the same, and so they would go to one one game, one one weekend. The next weekend it was to another, and so York. Hartlepool and and uh, um, Darlington would appear as many times on um, Tyne T's television as did Sunderland, Middlesbrough, and Newcastle. Uh, it, it, it was it was quite ridiculous, it, it, but that was the very strict ruling of the time. Um, whereas whereas now it, it it's it, it's so completely different, and the, there was this huge fear in the game that um <clears throat> uh, uh, there was a, a huge fear that um uh, that, that, that the more television there was the less people would go well i think the modern day is proving that so wrong um because crowds are at maximum um and 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 the and the television can't get enough 
Anyway. There, there, there wasn't the there wasn't the match of the day, Malcolm. There wasn't the match of the day situation where the cameras were at every top flight game. There wasn't That's that right. either. So there was no cameras at our game with Leicester, was it? No, no. So against Leicester, there were no cameras at all, and and it was only I think one in six games of ours that was televised, John. Um, uh, and so uh, the. the the Leicester game wasn't no cameras at all. No, you know, not not for news or anything. Um, it, it just wasn't allowed. Um, quite quite bizarre. Anyway, um, so yes, the 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 what happened to describe the goal? Leicester had a corner, and um, I think it was Paddy Howard headed it out. And it dropped down um, sort of inside right, just inside the box, um, to the feet of Irvin Natris. And he started running. Now, I've been back marking um, somebody on, on the um, uh, between the sticks in the goal. And, and so I set off. And so Irv, Irvin Natris was going through the inside right um, lane. And I was going straight through the middle, um, and uh, uh, and we caught the whole of Leicester completely by surprise, um, and there were, and, and it was just one person defending um, all of a sudden as as we were approaching the Leicester half, um, uh, and uh, if memory serves me, it was the midfielder John Samuels. And he, uh, and so he was sort of edging towards the line that Irving Naturist was running um, and backing off still a bit. Um, but he had his eye on me coming through the middle. And I was some 12 yards behind Irving Naturist. And Irving was quick. And so it was a real breakaway. And uh, But... The one thing I knew was that as soon as Irving crossed the halfway line, he would get rid of the ball. Um, I swear that he, he thought that, uh, that the opposing halfway line was full of crocodiles. I really, <laughs> he hated going in there. He, he was happier in, in, in Newcastle's half. Um, and, and so he, he went about 10 yards into the half John Samuels hadn't really closed him down at all. Um, and he just knocked the ball square. And I was coming like a steam train um, through the very middle of, of, of the pitch. And, um, and, and it, it was, um, and, and I and the ball met absolutely perfectly. I didn't have to adjust my run in any way whatsoever it was the, the whole timing of it was perfect um that uh, um and uh and and it was just there to be hit and it was about 40 yards from goal um i think I, it was i was still in the i was just in inside of the center circle and so i smacked it and it just and it went like a like a rocket i always remember um, about a year later, seeing um, I was watching. Um, there was a. Uh, it was on a Saturday morning, and the South African golfer um, uh, Gary Platt. He um, he was doing a, a, a golf lesson, and, and and what he had done was he had gone through the whole range of clubs in during the programs that he had done. And, and on this one, it was the last program. And he said, right, now I come to the most difficult of all clubs to use, and that's the driver. Um, and he said, uh, and he took his driver out of the bag, took the, the, took the cover off it, and he looked at it, and then at the camera, and he said, he said, with this big hitter, he said, I must have hit 10,000 shots. He said, and do you know, he said, there was only one of them that was perfect. And I thought, I understand exactly what you're saying, because that was the one perfect strike 
absolutely perfect that I struck against Leicester. Um, you know, all the others you could find a little bit of a fault with. But with Leicester, it was absolutely clean. And it was, uh, and for 40 yards, it just kept rising. And it, it, it hit, the, um, hit the back of the net only about five foot high. And it had been going sort of steadily up all the way over 40 yards. Um, and uh, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think of the goalkeeper. It wasn't... Um, Wallington. Wasn't Wallington, was it? Yeah, Mark Wallington. That's Mark right. Wallington, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And he, he, he got nowhere near it at all. Um, so, yes, it was a shame because um, that it... It was uh, it was quite a spectacular goal. Um, man, but, man, you but what, them, what I do remember, sorry, Joe. What I, I do was just remember, say two two hundred thousand people saw it, Malcolm. According to when you talk to people, <laughs> yeah, the crowd right. must have been two hundred thousand. Everybody was there that day. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 it was it was uh, it was quite a day and uh, one hell it was one hell of a goal um, um but the thing was that when i actually struck it, it it was in the action of coming of meeting the ball and then just striking it and not taking it on in a run to continue towards goal there was that oh bloody hell what's he think he's doing oh goal oh, 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 and everything <laughs> going mad but they were complaining to start with and all of a sudden were cheering so uh i'm looking yeah. i'm looking forward to isaac doing that at uh the etihad on uh, saturday That'll do. yeah we've got a question we've got a question for you, you john got, yeah do you think anybody's got the stupidity to hit us hit a shot now from 40 yards oh <laughs> you Alan Little says, uh, a question for Gibbo. What are his memories of the Newcastle Diamond Speedway team at Brough Park? I went mid to late 70s. I saw the Owen brothers. I saw a kid called Kenny Carter. I missed the legends Mauga, Olsen and Michinek. Also, I believe the crowds at Brough Park were massive back then. Do you think it'll ever return to Newcastle, Gibbo? Well, I tell you what, I never expected a question on Speedway tonight. No. I must say, that has completely thrown me, but... Yeah, I mean, I used to deal a lot with the boys down there and they do a lot of interviews and, um, you know, there's a great sadness that, that those days have gone because at the height, Newcastle Diamonds were one heck of a, a, a team. And they had, I mean, the times I remember was Ivan Major um, because he was a world champion, possibly one of the greatest speedway riders has ever been and he yeah. rode for us in newcastle was sensational the horns were good of course they were good and um, but major i mean i wasn't a petrol head um, i mean i know very little about motor cars or bikes i mean i changed my motor car when the uh, the cigarette uh, holder was full when when last year it was full i changed my car because i knew nothing about it apart from that is so that, that's that was my attitude towards vehicles but ivan major i did it i did it two or three despite not being a, a petrol head i was able because you're professional to do two or three talkings with ivan major and it was absolutely fascinating because he was the world's best and, and he was world champion while he was at newcastle imagine that Terrific days. Um, Speedway now, Poland's its hard heartland, etc. In this country, it's not what it was. Will it come back to Newcastle? There's nothing to indicate it will, but uh, lots of happy, happy memories. In in those days, we had the big hitters. Ivan Major, the Owens, we had the big hitters, and that that was great because that's what this town's about sports wise isn't it it's about yeah. having the great it is whether yeah. it's football whether it's rugby when when the falcons were won the championship under john hall and went to twickenham regularly whether it was brendan foster and mike mcleod with the athletics were about the big stars yeah uh, unfortunately now when you go to the shops you get surrounded by people riding around on motorbikes on the path so you get your yeah. own version of speedway modern day <laughs> um alan thompson says question malcolm and john 
Do you think the PSR will force Newcastle to build a new stadium, whether we like it or not, just for revenue alone, to compete at the top level? Thoughts, Malcolm? Do you think that do you think that do you think we're, we're heading towards a new stadium regardless? No, I don't. No, I I really don't. Um, what, why why would it be demanded as he's suggesting there? I, I don't understand that. I think it's because the, I think because the situation we find ourselves in, without taking up too much time, lads, is that we, we obviously are struggling with the FFP rules. We know that, which is limiting our spend. We all know that. And one way of increasing the spend um, it would be to increase corporate areas within the ground, which the club at the moment are doing. And unfortunately, what's happening is ordinary fans, working class fans, you know, middle class fans to an extreme now are being priced out of the ground because people can't afford a thousand pounds for a season ticket, Mal. We've been used to paying between three fifty and five hundred. Now a lot of areas are being asked to pay a thousand pounds plus for a for a season ticket. And that's only gonna happen more and more. I've already been told unofficially that the another area will be changed next season and those people who are currently in that area will will either have to pay the price or They'll, you know, you can't afford to go to the game anymore. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Now, that's where that's where we're at, Mal. So, I think a lot of people feel that potentially what will happen is the club will turn around and say, OK, we'll get it. Um, and there clearly is a demand for, for more tickets. So, what we'll do is we'll build a new stadium, which it's almost pushing you towards a new stadium. That's what the question means. I, I, right. Well, firstly, I think that there is scope to, to extend and expand St James Park, and, I, I, and I'm pretty sure that they'll be looking very carefully and working hard at coming up with all the best ideas on that. Um, uh, and and I think that there's uh, uh, um, a, a pretty much a changed attitude um, in ca council planning offices these days um, with with regards to planning permission. Um, but also, what, when when you when you're looking at the income situation, that that the the vast majority of income it it comes in through through advertising sponsorship and and so on and so forth. What you've got to remember is that Mike Ashley really did a stitch up on on the club. He mm -hmm. did an absolute stitch up before just before he left and left it pretty much for two to three years without a great deal of income coming in. And that has seriously um, and, and sadly affected um, the, 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 um, Newcastle's um, workings in the, um, in the transfer market, seriously affected it, that, uh, that there's, there's been just a fraction at the disposal of the club that there should have been um mm -hmm. and uh and so all of that is is going to be changing over the next few months mm -hmm. um so all in all i really don't think that there's any that, that there's any need for for alarm um but it it will come it 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 will it will gradually get there but it's not going to be it all in a bum's rush I mean, the, the whole situation, and it is frightening for the, the average supporter, which I include me in my upbringing when I was a supporter, in the level, not a rich man, uh, a working class man when brought up in, uh, and middle class, no more, um, is affordability. And new, the, the new Newcastle owners will exploit the situation within St. James's Park to make as much money as they can to fight against Manchester United and Liverpool and Manchester City, and it, the, the the worrying thing is that sections of the crowd of the ground will season tickets will go through the roof and really, really hurt because they've got to make money within the commercial side, and the only way of doing that within the ground is to to make certain parts of the ground rooms where you pay three times as much as the ordinary fan and have 
hospitality in, in that mm. crisis, the rank and file working class man out of support in his own club, unless the stadium suddenly becomes much, much bigger than the 52,000. It would break my heart romantically to leave St. James's Park, and I still cling to the hope that we will be able to build upwards and move slightly outwards yeah. as well with help on the limitations that are around the ground with the buildings that are around the ground. But if we have to go down the route, and it will be looked from Saudi, if wanting to show the greatest respect to Newcastle United uh, supporters, but it'll be looked by, by the Saudi people as a business proposition and how do we exploit the space we've got to the maximum we can. And if the club is successful, like it was last season and like uh, we hope it's going to continue to be, they look to increase our revenue, which means mm. that seats that go to the ordinary working class man, if, if, if the rich guys will pay three times as much and have a room and have a meal at the same time, then that's the way it'll go. It, but if we, I'm, I'm in the Alan Shearer camp, if we've got to have a new stadium, if, and I still cling to St James's Park because of 130 years, but it's easy for me to do that, that's the romantic in me. But I'm not paying the prices or getting them increased that the Newcastle United supporters are in facing the fear that the only way they'll be able to watch is if they pay in four figures. If it's going to have to move to get a 70, 80,000 stadium, it's got to be as close to St James's Park as possible. It's got to be within the, the shadow of St James's Park, if you like, and not be stuck out somewhere beyond the town uh, to try to keep this cathedral on the hill situation in the center of town and not go out into the sticks somewhere and um, it is a very emotive situation um it'll unveil as time goes on but i i thoroughly 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 understand the worry as a working class lad that was brought up on the terraces as a ben and with my family uh we couldn't have, I couldn't have afforded to watch Newcastle United um, in the situation I was in, if it was today, with the threat that everything's going to be turned into a lounge and everything is going to have an extra mm -hmm. note on the price because it's going to be a lounge and they're going to give you a pie or something to justify that seat, etc., etc. And you can, you can end up pricing out the genuine supporter, sure. That's the, not the, the basic the problem, supporter, though, and then end up with a load. We have criticised Manchester United for the Prawn Sandwich Brigade. We don't want to end up as the Prawn Sandwich Brigade. The problem is that the income that comes in from those kind of seats, look at Spurs, Yano mentions this, we've seen it in the press. Spurs used to make £1 million revenue per game, now they make £6 million revenue per game. Uh, plus, they have lots of other revenue streams through NFL concerts, etc. And that's the attraction. That is the attraction. And and the, you know, there are seats where you, you can pay anything up to six thousand pound a game to sit on the bench behind the players. I mean, that 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 exists at Chelsea. Uh, Trolls mentions that five grand sure. to sit behind overpaid players. And G makes the point, Malcolm. PIF will never spend a billion pounds for an extra 18,000 seats. It makes no economic sense as an investment fund as it would take 20 years to break even. So a new stadium, it looks as if that's where we'll head to with this feasibility study. Yeah, but, yeah. OK, but, but at, at, at Spurs and, and at Arsenal, people are paying um, thousands uh, a, a season to go mm -hmm. and watch their team. You know, you, you've just said that people are, are, are unhappy of paying a thousand pounds a season. Yeah. That, that, that it, when it used to be three or four hundred. Yeah. Now, um, but, but we've got to realize that, that in, in the South, that they get uh, um, a far, far greater amounts of money from their crowds than ever yep. you will do up here. And it doesn't matter what you do um, up here. It's it, 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 it's a different ball. It, it, well, a oh, different ball game. It's it's a it, it's a completely different um, financial climate here in the north um, to the south. And 
and and so Newcastle, the club, is not helped by that. It's always it's all it's always going to mean that they'll be lagging behind in some way. It doesn't matter how rich the owners are. I mean, and bizarrely, get the revenue through the gates. Bizarrely, the club had a meeting last night. I mean, yeah, you know, fair play. They're inviting fans up to have a chat, etc. You know, people are selected by ballot. You can put yourselves in for it. But uh, how to create a better atmosphere at the ground? Well, I'll tell you how you create a better atmosphere at the ground. It's what happens on the pitch. It's organic. You can't manufacture yeah, exactly. You can't manufacture it. But make no, down, make no doubt about it, the increase in corporate at a ground will affect the atmosphere as well, you know, because yeah. the corporate yeah. don't go to watch the football, they go to entertain the corporate guests to try and get that deal over the line on a Monday. And half of them yeah. have, half of them have had a drink and aren't bothered about the match. Well, yeah, I mean the big the big worry, Steve, is that this has always been a working man's club. Um and that's it's heartland. That's the people that passionately care. And it's the people that we want to make certain unsqueezed out of St. James's Park of a future ground. But, you know, if people are willing to pay the money, then the temp if you're sitting in Saudi and you think you can turn seats where you get 600 into seats where you get over a grand uh, and, and you don't buy into what the club was and what the rank and file support is, and you go down, you'll go down that route. And if Newcastle are successful, we'll get away with it because some of the fans will be corporate fans that come from outside the area, but they want to come to support a big club, and they they'll do it because of their corporate guests. And as you say, they won't care monkeys about the game, really. They'll no. care about the occasion, and and therefore, and by the way, if it therefore goes pear shaped. Where's, where's the guys that supported you all the time? You, you've got to be careful that you don't squeeze out the peop, the heartland of the club, the people that care about the club. It is a very difficult balance in that. And it's one that fills you full of trepidation. But then great, I'm full of great news. Great news for Gateshead. Great news for Dunstan. Great news for North Shields. Teams that need support is that those people who do get pushed away from St. James's Park will probably turn to non league, lads. No, I doubt it. And not that much. I don't think it really makes much of a difference, Steve. I really don't. Not, uh, you know, if, if Gateshead are, are successful, and they're doing very well at the moment. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, but is, is it making is it making that much of a difference to their gates? I tell you what, Steve. Steve, you depressed me about the Newcastle United ground. You haven't even asked me about Manchester City yet, so I'm going see, to cut your throat at the end of the podcast. I was settling. I was. I was leading up to it. You see, I'm gently bedding. <laughs> I'm gently. I'm gently bedding you in, lads. Um, I was going to say I'm going to cut your throat now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just yeah. want to ask one more question before we go to that. So we, we'll probably just get a Q and A for that. But we've got an interesting one. We tend to pick different questions. Borough fan, uh, thanks for watching, mate. He says, "Can I ask the lads? Do they think the new stud design is causing knee and ankle issues as they don't have any give once they are planted in the pitch?" I've said this for a long time now, Mal. A lot of new injuries seem to have been developed. If you remember when the metatarsal yes. came in, when David Beckham broke his his um, you know his foot, and we'd never heard of a metatarsal injury, but no surprise that we now don't have as much protection on boots, and it was an injury on the top of the foot. You know, so do you, sure, think, possibly, sure. do you think possibly this could be a reason, Malcolm? Now, um, people have to understand just what. The players play on these days and what there is um laying on the very surface of the pitch mm -hmm. is, is a is a very fine nylon mesh that covers the whole pitch and the grass grows up through the holes in the mesh and and so what that means is that that mesh is what the studs are making contact with not the not the the soft soil and so um and so it's they've had to completely change um the the boots um and rather than than wear screwing studs they they have to use molded rubber um and, and it'll be small studs possibly even like pimple studs 
um, and and the and the grip reduces. If you watch, Dan Byrne has a problem keeping on his feet because he's forever slipping over, falling over, and I think it's because he's so tall that he and he's not got the he's not got the grip that he requires under his boots. Um, and and so it, 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 he's more top heavy than he normally would be um, and, and over he goes uh, and it, and so there are different injuries yes um, and I think it's and I think purely and simply it's because the pitch surface is totally different to what it used to be they don't play on on soil any longer they play on a plastic mesh covering uh, okay there you, there you go good answer good answer good question that so uh th thanks for that i've got one more for you malcolm and um I, I don't like to miss out when someone asks a personal question uh question for super mac you did such a good job as luton manager he says oh hold on you were, full, you, were, you, were full of, you were full of manager how you come did. you didn't ever take another job and did Newcastle ever offer you a coaching or managerial role? So yeah, yeah, it's an yeah. easy mistake to make. You played for Luton. You managed. Right, yeah, you yeah, managed for yeah, yeah. I was five years manager at Fulham, and we did well. We did well. And it was enjoyable. Um, but uh, I, after when I left Fulham, and this was after a massive argument with the chairman, um, that uh, uh, I, I think it was. I think it was um, Bill McGarry who, who um, left Newcastle <coughs> and they were looking for a manager and from what I understand although I never spoke to anybody directly at New within Newcastle um, the, the club um, that they were considering Laurie McMenemy and they were considering me and there was a sort of hung board on it and um and so the the chairman stan seymour jr um he threw another name into it and 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 it was um jack charlton and he got the job mm. i don't know um your recall on it john mm. but but this, this was told to me i don't know how um i don't know how true it is i don't know the the, the I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, Malcolm, but I do know that at certain stages within Newcastle, your name was obviously touted because of the success you were having at Fulham, mm -hmm. and Laurie McMenemy's name was touted when he was having the success at Southampton, uh, and of course, both with huge links up here. You was an ex-player, and Laurie is a Newcastle fan who was born yeah. in Dayton. Uh, and so both were in the running at various times. Uh, I know that when uh, Jack John's name was put forward by Stan Seymour, it had some support, As forgetting about the other people, it had some support from Jackie Milburn because it was family. It was... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jack was part of the family. And um, Jack was a Newcastle United fan. Bobby never was. Um, but Jack was, but uh, I think Jack was a magnificent manager for the underdog, but not a magnificent manager for the top dog. For example, mm. his huge successes were uh, at places like Middlesbrough and Sheffield Wednesday at clubs, but not Newcastle United, the Republic of Ireland, sensational, but mm. not England. Mm. If he would take a smaller club or a smaller country and, de and devise tactics, ball quickly from back to front, attack, yeah. get the second ball off a big centre forward score, he would have tactics that would work brilliantly for a club. But that club didn't have to be Manchester United or Newcastle or Liverpool. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have worked at that level. He was brilliant for the Republic of Ireland at the international level because you overcome their limitations. But if he wouldn't have worked for England or Brazil or Italy, or it, it was all different circumstances. I had a lot of time for Jack as a bloke. Loved him to death. I thought he was oh, a yeah, yeah. wrong. He was great company, wasn't he? Yeah, 
who wrong manager for Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. We are at the end of the program. Uh, Newcastle do play in the FA Cup uh, this weekend to 5:30 kickoff live to the nation. Um, Malcolm, uh, even me, the eternal optimist, um, is going to say that it's going to take penalties for Newcastle to get into the next round. So Newcastle, <laughs> so it's a penalty shootout for me, lads. Uh, that is my get-out clause this week, and Newcastle will get through and draw Liverpool. So Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> and were, I, you that, I, were you that fella getting off the plane on Fantasy Island, the little guy in the white suit? <laughs> did you play that part? I, I didn't realise it was you. Uh, it's a plane, it's a plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. No, I, I think that uh, this this one's way beyond us. And okay. that uh, Manchester City will be... Uh, yeah, yeah. It'll be nice to see a score against them, but... Uh, um, I'm even doubting that at the moment, the way we are. And um, so I think the FA Cup's got it, it, it can be written off this weekend. And, uh, uh, and and let's just concentrate on getting into Europe. So, I, I, uh, yeah, I think it, it's, uh, it could be a bit of a walloping in store this weekend. It's a walloping from Malcolm. John, what you well, got under your hat this week? God, crikey. Uh, it, the only thing we can say, the best we can say, is that this is the fourth meeting between Newcastle and Manchester City this season. And all three previous games have been close, score-wise, which means we've always remained in the game. We beat them in the League Cup up here 1-0. Yeah. The only reason they can't complete a quadruple this season is because of Newcastle United. The only reason they can't win all four trophies to Venter in is because of Newcastle United yeah. that knocked them out the league yeah. cup. They, they're going for a, a double treble, which is yeah. quite yeah. staggering. But the only reason we beat them 1-0 in the league cup. In the, in the Premier League, we lost 3-2 up here when De Bruyne turned the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And we lost only 1-0 down there. The performance wasn't good, but we lost only 1-0. And those three results mean that in all three games, we were never totally out of the game. We True. were always in with a chance. And that is the only thing we can hang on to, because the way we've played in 2024, uh, significant results apart, like winning at Aston Villa, um, and beating Wolves, who's both are strikers, their top score as well, uh, has an, doesn't advocate anything. The way we leak goals is frightening. The, the chance we had, I felt, was taking them to a replay by drawing in 90 minutes, getting them up here, and it could be very different. We haven't even been given that opportunity because we're going to extra time and penalties. And that that's dreadfully against us. I mean, if we want to be scared, if you want to sit the kids down and tell them a, a, a ghost story to terrify them, you've just got to say FA Cup holders, Premier League holders, European champions, World Club champions, plus on a 21 match unbeaten run now if that doesn't terrify you where you want to go and lie down in a darkened room because you've got migraine i don't know what will uh, but they actually happen to be facts without saying that we played badly against chelsea and we've been leaking goals like a colander and then um, you know we fight join hands to find the living um, so, no, I'm not walking into this thinking that, um, you know, it's going to be lovely to be at Wembley in a semi-final and at long last this aged hack is going to see Newcastle and I win something again. I'm not going down that route. What I'm, and this sounds awful and defeatist, but it, it, anybody that listens to this show knows how much the three of us care about Newcastle United. I'm just hoping that whatever the result is, and I think we will not be in the semi-finals, that we go out with dignity, that we we'll go out with a performance, we we'll go out where we can hold our heads high, we we'll go out when we are not embarrassed. 
That is important. So have you got a prediction, John? I will lose. Yeah, God's I mean, I don't want, it doesn't matter if it's 3 2 or, or 12 now. You're out the cup and your yeah. goal difference isn't affected because it's not the league. Nope. All that matters is what the result is, and the result is we lose. So when we yeah. tune, tune in next Thursday, lads, we know you both predicted a defeat, and uh, I predicted a win on penalties. We will wait to see. We your little see. fibber, your little fibber, Phil Collins. <laughs> Have a good week, lads. Enjoy the weekend. Take care. Yeah, enjoy All your football. Take care, lads. Thank you.